Lord you God. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Lift up your hand this morning. And let's praise him. Let's worship him. First Kings chapter 18, verses 36 through 40. Let us stand in reverence to the word of God. And the word reads, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant. And we can paraphrase that and say, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and America, let it be known this day that you are the God of the United States of America. And I, Pastor Alvin, am your servant. And that I have done all the things that your word, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Say it with me. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal, do not let one of them escape. So they seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and executed them there. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I submit myself right now to your will, Lord. And what comes out of my lips, let it not be my sayings, Lord, but let it be you speaking through me, Lord. Father, that we may come to the realization, Lord, that we need to draw nigh unto you so that the devil and the world will draw away from us, Lord, so that we can live that holy life that you expect us to live, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. How many have a family altar? You know, that family altar used to be a place in a corner in a certain room where at a certain time everything would come at a standstill in the home 
And you would gather around that place and seek God. But it seemed like that has faded off. But you know what? I'm not talking about a physical altar. I'm talking about the altar in your spirit, in your soul, in your life. Our time in the altar should be personal. You see this in verses 30 to 35 of that chapter. And our time at the altar should be personal. See, that, that, that text breaks it into one of the greatest showdowns in the biblical between world, uh, between Isaiah, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. You know, there was, there was a senator that stood up and spoke about the will of God and said a nation that rejects the will of God is a nation headed for disaster. And another senator stood up and said, hey, 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 don't talk about the will of God here because the will of God has nothing to do with this senator. We don't care about the will of God. We care about what we can do. And see, Elijah was facing that because Jezebel and all uh, that were involved were worshiping the prophets of Baal. And they were going in the wrong direction. And see, Israel had to be turned around. Israel had to be brought back to acknowledge that God is God and God never changes and God will be God forever and ever. And see, it was the greatest showdown. Can you imagine? Can you visualize the showdown between uh, uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal? And he put him to the to a challenge. He said, come on. We're going to do a demonstration before the people so they will know who is the God of Israel. And uh, remember, Israel had been compromising for a long time and had bowed down to false gods. It was 50 years from the days of David and Solomon. It had rained, it had not rained in Israel for over three years. Can you imagine going right here in the White Mountains without rain for three years? Not even a drop. We would be at a very dangerous situation with all these wildfires. And see, the nation was in famine. The economy was bad. The economy right now in America is very bad. The morality of the people was corrupt. Anything that used to be sin is no longer sin. What used to be good is no longer good. It's bad. See, the nation is going the wrong direction. And we the churches need to pray and pray effectively and say, God, turn this nation around, Lord. Bring this nation back into its knees and acknowledge that you are the Lord and that you will never change. This nation was founded on your word. They prayed and fasted and they dedicated their lives before they wrote anything. They sought you, God. But leaders have come and gone that have turned the nation away from you, Lord. But God, we need a showdown. Just like Elijah and the prophets of Baal, we need a showdown, Lord. 
We need your power moving in the church in a greater measure than ever before. We need you, oh God, to prepare our altar. Cleanse our mind, oh God. Cleanse our spirit. Cleanse our way of acting, the way of thinking, the way of speaking. Lord, bring us back to our knees. And let us realize, oh God, that we, we may go through the motions, but God, in reality, we the church have drifted away from you. No longer do we see miracles take place during the Christian worship. No longer do we see people run into the altar under the conviction of the power of the Holy Spirit. No longer do we see people passing through the streets and stop because the, the anointing is so great that they have no choice but to come in and fall before the living God. Oh God, change our mind, Lord. Change our thinking. Change our actions, Lord. That when we come to church, we can bow down and say, God, we will not get up until we have the assurance that you're going to move supernaturally in our midst, oh God. We're tired of the mediocre. We're tired of going through the motions, Lord. We want to see your spirit real in the church. We want to see your spirit moving in the church again. And see, Elijah challenged him, the false prophets, to see which God would answer in fire and consume in the sacrifice. Four hours, the false prophets had called on Baal. And there were no response. Not even a, not even a, a small little spark. And the Bible says that they began to whip themselves. And they were cutting slashes on their, on their bodies and hollering. And, and Elijah taunted them and says, holler louder. Maybe your God is gone on a trip. Or maybe he's asleep and you got to wake him up. Come on, holler louder. And they done all kinds of things. Four hours, and nothing happened. Then Elijah, he says, then Elijah, verse 30, then Elijah said to all the people, come near me. So all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench. Can you imagine? He made a trench around the altar, large enough to hold two sets of seed. And then he put the wood in order, See, when, we, when you build your altar, make sure that everything is set in order. There can be nothing out of, the, out of the, uh, the norm. It has to be set in order. He cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, Fill four water pots with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice on the wood. Now that water was very precious in that day because they were going through a drought. And he said, come on, spill some of that water that you're, you're holding back. That's your lifeline. But I want you to sacrifice. I want you to pour that water over the altar. Soak that, that bull soaked the wood, soaked the, the stones, and the water filled the trench around it. See, God will work in the impossible. You know, to, 
to them, they looked at it and said, this man is crazy. He's out of his head. He's doing something ridiculous. But look at verse 34. Then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. Then he said, do it a third time. And they do it a third. So the water ran all around the altar. He also filled the trench with water. But this is the interesting part. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I'm your servant. Can you imagine everything was at a standstill? There must have been a silent. Nothing moving. All eyes were in the altar. This man is going in the deep end. He's calling for something impossible. And see, that's what the devil wants us to think. That we're in a modern time that cha things have changed. They say, well, you know, the methods have changed. We don't worship God like they did 20, 30, 40 years ago. We have a new wave of doing things. And see, they were looking at him and said, this man is going in the deep end. But then, he calls out and he says, verse, verse 37, hear me, O Lord. Hear that, that this people may know that you are the Lord God. That you have turned their hearts back to you again. And God is God, and God will honor the prayers of his people. When you are sincere, and you pray with authority, and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and under the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit, things will happen. When he prayed immediately, the fire fell down, and it consumed the sacrifice, and the, the, the rocks became dust. He not only burned the, the bull, the wood, but he burned the rocks. They become dust. And what happened? It dried up the water. Woo! The power of God fell right there, and people began to rejoice and began to worship God. We need to pray. We need to seek God like never before and say, God, we don't want to go through the mediocre. We don't want to go through the routines of God. We want a supernatural manifestation of you, oh God. Like we've seen it 20, 30 years ago, people were sincere. They were not hooked up with all the, the electronic gadgets. They took their Bible, Lord. Not their phone. They took their Bible and they began to read your word, and they began to be instructed by your word, and they began to be nurtured by your word, and they began to act on your word, oh God. Church, we need to come back to God. We need to lay things aside and say, God, no longer I, but you, oh God, working in my life, working in me and through me, oh God. Lord, I'm tired of the mediocre. Lord, I'm tired of going through the motions. Lord, I want to walk in into your very presence. I want to see the smoke of your presence. I want to smell the aroma of your presence. I want to be saturated by your spirit, oh God. But we have fallen into complacency. 
our self-satisfied with the way we are. Don't ruffle no feathers, Pastor. Don't make me uncomfortable because I'm satisfied the way I am. Really? Can you really say you're satisfied the way you are? Do you not hunger and thirst for more of God? Do you not desire a great move of God upon your life? Church, God is challenging us today. Just like Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. I've gone out of my notes. God, God is speaking to me to speak to you. We as a church, I include myself. We as a church have drifted away. The church in America is on the decline. Christianity is on the decline. Why? Because we have let other things draw our attention away from the things of God. A church, it's time we wake up. This is the greatest altar call that God is giving to the world, not only to America, but to the world. Because God has been pushed aside. That tore me when I heard that. I heard it with my own ears. It wasn't something I read. When that senator said, don't bring the will of God, we don't care about the will of God. And when a nation or a church does not care about the will of God, they're destined for disaster. Church, we need to wake up. We need to hunger and thirst after the things of God. We need to bow down and say, Lord, I will not get up until you have touched me, until the fire from above comes and burns out all impurities out of my life, Lord. Whoo, hallelujah. I need your sanctification. I need, oh God, for you to sanitize me inside and out. Sanitize my mind. Sanitize my heart. Sanitize my spirit, Lord. So that I can be sensitive to you, oh God. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us as a church. Forgive us as a nation that we have drifted away from you, Lord. God, we ask you to come into our heart and to our life right now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.